Hey, Shalom. We give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and Shalom to the elect that's pushing out this word throughout the four corners of the globe in sincerity and in truth. This is for the edification of the house of Dawada, the house of David, the hopeful elect. And we do these lessons uh, for the house of David, for the hopeful elect, that they may be edified in Yahweh. Why Yahweh Shai, this is Yahweh the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai is only begotten Son, who the world calls Jesus. Shalom to you. Hope you go in, hope that you are in good spirits. Uh, let's get to the first scripture. Uh, we're going to go to the first book of the Corinthians and the fifth chapter. As we see here, Paul, the Apostle Paul, condemns spiritual pride. Let's talk about spiritual pride. I can hardly believe the report. This is in LT Salakia. Let me put it in the uh, KJV. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Fornication. What is fornication? There is fornication among us. It says illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals. Metaphorically, the worship of idols. Of the defilement of idolatry as incurred by eating the sacrifices offered to idols. Idolatry. This is the fornication. It's not necessarily always sexual, but it's the worshiping of another power or another God. It's spiritual marriage with another God, if you can understand that. It's not being one with the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shai, but it's being one with other things that will tempt you or that will keep you from the Heavenly Father and what He requires of us. It's a buildup. It's a it 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 lives in you if you allow it to live in you, and it does something to you that is not spiritually sound, and spiritually sound meaning righteous. It becomes an infection, a spiritual infection. On your spirit, on your soul. So let's re continue reading on. Fornication among us. And such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Paul is speaking spiritually so people can understand the fornication that he's alluding to. The Corinthians were so far Greek-like, they actually slept with their father's wives. So he made a reference to sexual immorality, and he's going to speak about a spiritual fornication. Remember, it's a marriage. It's something that you joined unto. As you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Put this away from us. We have the examples. We understand what it is. But put this away from us. We don't want this around us. This marriage ugliness. For I verily, 
as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh when you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh to deliver such as one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh This thing that can be in our flesh, meaning the things that we gravitate to, be given to Satan. That's for him. That's not for the Lord when he comes back. He's coming and looking for the righteous and the ones who are doing these righteous deeds. It's more than just believing or saying. It's the doer of the word is justified also. To deliver such as one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved. Because your flesh is not going to be saved when the Lord comes back. It's the spirit that's going to be delivered. Okay? So what's in your spirit? What are the things that you're doing in your spirit? And no one can manage or judge that but you. This is what you need to take sight of. This is the thing that you must examine in yourself. Where are you and what's clinging to you in the spirit? Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? It's not good to have leaven or things in you that puffs you up, that you cling into that's not righteous. Again, from the title, it says immorality rebuked. The things that you are doing, this fornication, this marriage with unrighteous spirit in your flesh. Not only that you're doing the things in your flesh, now the spirit is now infected by this leaven. Purge out, verse 7 says, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, that you are unleavened. You don't have time for that. Just like the children of Israel had unleavened bread when they left the, through, through the exodus in Egypt, they don't have time. To be puffed up. Or to put leaven in their bread. They had to move in haste. Just like today. We moving in haste. We don't have time for these things to attach to us. We need to purge. These things out. Purge. Let's look up this word. Purge. We got the purge. We ain't got time for this. We ain't got time to have these things in our spirits. We moving in haste. It says to cleanse out clean thoroughly. Thoroughly cleanse out the old leaven. We just went through Passover. We understood what the leaven is. The leaven is things that puff up. The leaven is things that uh, make things to swell, get bigger. We don't have time for that. We don't have time to go back to the old leaven that puffed us once up or once puffed us up. 
We're supposed to be a new lump designed in righteousness. This is what the Passover is supposed to symbolize. Part of it. That we get rid of the old ways. The old thoughts and the old spirits that we once had. It's a new beginning in your spirit. So when we go back to Corinthians, it says, let us, Salat, therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven. The feast is supposed to be a celebration, a type of observant of what was once, but now you're living in a different time. This is supposed to be throughout the throughout the, uh, uh, the the year, so to speak. You're supposed to be doing the purging out what was once not good, now turn into what is good for you and what's good for the spirit, recognized by the Heavenly Father as righteousness for you. And teach men so. Get rid of that. Uh-uh. Now, we're not dealing with that no more. And Paul showed you, we're not sleeping with our father's wives anymore. We are a new lump of unleavened bread. Unleavened. And bread is the word. We unleaven now. Don't take on more agents of leavening. Leavening agents, as we been taught, as, as we know, Right, is is a yeast type substance that puffs up batters and doughs, cookies and cakes. It gives it these gas bubbles that makes breads crown. And if you know what crowning of the bread is, right, it's not flat. It's crowning. So basically it does it for you. It's crowning you in a certain way. No, no, we get rid of that. We want flat bread. We want to live flat so we don't be puffed up with these mixtures of agents in our spirit. Paul says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, other spirits that may puff you up. Other doctrines that will crown you, but fill you up with nonsense and admixtures. Don't keep company with the, these types. We want the flat bread. Yet, not altogether with the fornicators, fornicators of this world, because there are so many different admixtures that you could fill your spirit up with that ain't right for you. It gives you a crown, but it's you puffed up with nonsense, fillers, gluten. Not with fornications of this world or with the covetous extortioners, idolaters, for then must you need to go out of the world. This is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be so far from the truth, you're going to be in the world. You'll find yourself in the world. And then you will be sliced up like a loaf of bread in this world because the world will give you destruction. The word gives you life. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, covetous, idle to, idolater, railer, drunkard, extortioners, with son, with, with such as one know not to eat. You don't fill yourself up with that. These are not good for you. 
This loaf of bread is fat, crowned, but filled up with death. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without Yahweh judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked per person. And the person comes with idols, comes with fornications, come with rallying, which is unruliness. Want to do his own thing. You should be the same rebel. You should be like me or us. No, we need to be with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Everything else is leavening agents. Everything else is leavening agents. You see that? So this new lump, this new type of man follows the way of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Follow the ways of his savior. Follow the ways of his laws. Follow the ways of the commandments. Not what everyone else is doing. Being trenders. Being, uh, what's the word when they use on uh, uh, influencers. Motivational speakers. You doing what the world is doing. Let's get this. This is what you need to do. Colossians. The book of Colossians, the third chapter. And we're going to start at the fifth verse. What what the title say? Put on the new self. Let's start at the top. If it, if you be risen with Yahweh Shai, the anointed, seek those things which are above. Where Yahweh Shai sitteth on the right hand of the Father. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. That is so simple. We hear, but we not hear. Little testimony. I knew this, uh, I know this, uh, uh, young woman, right? Through a friend. And she says she's here, but not here. You understand what I mean? Or do you understand what she mean? We're living in this, but we're not living in this. We're alive in this, but we're not living in this world. So basically, it sounds as though she don't know her purpose in this life. This is why it's strange to her or she can't see herself in this living. So her life must have a purpose that's best for her. That's the best way I could describe it. When you see yourself outside of yourself but still dealing with everyday life and not truly living, this is what you would sum up. You would say to yourself, I'm not truly living. I'm alive, but I'm not living. So what do we have to live for? It says here, for you are dead and your life is hid with Yahweh Shai in the power. This is where you need to be. Dead to the world, but living with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is life. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. This is what we're looking forward to. This gives us purpose. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, right? You in the sea. You standing on the, in the subway. You sitting in your car. Mortify your members that are upon the earth. 
fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, even concupiscence, evil concupiscence, covetous, which is idolatry. When you mortify, you put things to death. You don't literally put your arm to sleep, your behind to sleep. But what you're doing is making it not the forefront. It becomes the background. Now you're living in what we call this life. Now you're living because living is in Yahawashah. Hamashiach. You see that? This is living. It says here, for which things sake the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience. They don't see this. They don't see that purpose. When you're disobedient to mortifying the deeds of your flesh and the deeds of your body and your thoughts, you become disobedient. When you don't put a halt to it, you become disobedient to the Heavenly Father. Therefore, as you're living, you're actually dead. You are the zombies. Aimlessly walking around. That's what zombie movies is about. You aimlessly being in a beast state of mind. In which, verse 7 says, you also walked some time when you lived in them, that disobedience. But now you also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You are now in the image of the heavenly father that created Yahweh Shai. Now you're in Christ. Now you can live. This is what you don't understand when you say to yourself, I'm here, but I'm not here. That means you have no purpose. You walk in aimlessly. You a lump of leavened or leavening with no purpose. Crowned with all types of doctrines, but get sliced up like a loaf in this world. This is why we say, and I bring this out all the time, Psalm 51 and verse 14. It says, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O power, thy power of my, my that my power of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For thou desireth not sacrifice, else would I gave it or give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings, but obedience, as Samuel writes, first chapter, uh, first, first Samuel, the 15th verse, when he tells Saul, Saul told him he did this and did that, but what did Samuel say through, uh, what did Yahweh say through Samuel to tell Saul? To obey 
is better than sacrifice. It says, for thou desires not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delighteth not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of Yahweh are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O power, thou would not despise these things. To, to have a contrite heart. Dekha, right? Let's look it up. Contrite heart. Broken is how we're supposed to be living. Not puffed up with doctrines and crowns of other uh, uh, doctrines. Dekha, dekha, it says here to be crushed, be broken. Crushed to pieces. Collapsed. Physically or mentally broken. This is the state you're supposed to say you're in and we are in. You can't be in a state of despair and believe you're puffed up as if you have some type of crown on your head or pride about you. All of these things is contrary to actually how we truly are living. We hear, but not living. You must recognize this. Therefore, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, what does it say? Be strong. This is all you can do, but how do you be strong? Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yahweh. He gives you this time to recognize that you're not living while you're alive without me. When you recognize that, right, this is the way you're supposed to be thinking in your spirit. Not covetous, railers, liars, despisers. It says here, and the things that thou hast learned of me among many witnesses, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also, once you've learned, it's your duty to teach this word. You have no other choice. In your head, in your spirit, it can't stay there. It's too big to be allowed to stay in your spirit and not let out. You would bust. This spirit is fire. Fire. You can't consume fire. It will burn your insides out. It has to escape. It's explosive. You can't keep it. It must come out. And this coming out, right? This thing that you do is to teach others of what the Lord had put in you so others could learn and others could teach, not sit there just going through the motions. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. You're in his army now. You carry out his marching orders and his marching orders tell you to teach others, learn of me and teach others. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, which is of death, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. You don't go to the army to say, you know what, I want to die. I want to go to the front lines and die. That's crazy talk. You want to defeat your enemies and the enemies 
is the world and the things in it. You fight against the principalities. You fight against the fornicators, the idolaters. Even yourself is at war with yourself. Your spirit and your flesh are at war with each other. You must fight. And continue to fight until it's over, until the war is over. If any man also strive for the masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. See, the world crowned you from the beginning. You learn of me, learn of me, the world. I give you a crown right away. You ain't have to do nothing. Because I puffed you up with doctrines that causes you death. No, we labor, it says here, we labor, being the husband man, must be first partakers of the fruits. The husband man that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruits of the world, of, of, of the word. Not the world, of the word, misspoke, Salakia. Because we're striving for the crown that we're going to get at the end of the race. Not the beginning. You know, nobody gets crowned at the beginning of the race. The world crowns you at the beginning of the race. You ain't even do nothing. You take do this and you got the record contract. Do this, I put you in every movie that, that comes about. It gives you everything in the front and nothing of residual in the rear. It gets nothing. You get everything in the front. You have to do everything before you even do anything in this world. Basically, you submit. But we are the husband men that laboreth to partake in the fruits. And the fruits is all types of fruits. It's all types of fruits that we have to endure to receive the crown in the end. First, we got to practice what we preach. We got to live what we say. We got to do. We got to teach. We have to listen. We have to learn. We got to do a lot. The fruits are is is a, is a cocktail of things, but we must learn these things and do these things and continue and endure to receive the crown. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Remember that Yahweh Shai of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This is Paul saying is his gospel because this is what he followed. It's not his good news about Yahweh Shai being of the seed of David. That's just what he is. But the things that he say about Yahweh Shai and King David is according to this good news, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, locked up for the things he say. But the word of Yahweh is not bound. Paul go through a lot. This is, was part of his cocktail, that you have to in, even endure prison. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. This word, this endurance, this crown, this finish line is for the elect's sake. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Hamashiach, Yahweh with eternal glory. This is why we do this. The world does not give you the eternal glory. Of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh They give you damnation. Of the world. Through Satan and his minions. That's what the world gives. That's what leavening does to you. 
We're not leavening agents. We're not leveling agents. It is faithful saying, for if you be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also would deny us. If we believe not yet abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. This is why we do it. This is why we believe. This is why we do. This is why we teach. What does it say here? Be strong. We give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh Shalom.